And I remember I was very blessed to, um, to have this experience of a near-death experience, and I wanted to share it with you. I uh, fell back and hit my head very hard, and it sent me uh, into, into, this into, the, into this tunnel, right? And so I remember when I first entered the tunnel, there was, a, there was a, a feeling that my father was present, who died at, at an early age when I was 14, and a friend of mine that also, I, I love this little boy, he was a, he's like my little brother, and he, he got run over by a car. And uh, I missed him very much, and he was there as well. I remember feeling their consciousness. But as I was and entered this tunnel, I could see at the end of the tunnel, there was a very brilliant, bright, beautiful white light. And it was so bright and so beautiful that I wanted to go into that light. There was no resistance, only that I was feeling uh, resistant or hesitant because I felt shame. I felt guilt about, because I remember the experience very vividly to this day. It happened when I, I had first gotten into yoga and I'd been into yoga for about six months and was shedding off many of the vices and lots of things that were no longer needed or useful. And uh, so I, I had a, a very uh, deep and profound change in my consciousness and, and my life. But this came right after that. And uh, like I said, the light was so brilliant and so beautiful. And, and uh, as I w wanted to go into it, I was hesitant because of these thoughts of shame and guilt. And I kept thinking, forgive me, forgive me, you know? because this light was so revealing and the rays were like streaming towards me and like going through me. And, uh, and I have to say there was a, the being at the heart of this light was uh, a male, with more of a he consciousness. So as I was having these thoughts from the light came this very strong uh, message transmitted kind of into my consciousness. It said, there's nothing to forgive. You were never judged. And that was so beautiful. It wasn't just the words, but imbued in those words was unconditional love. Unconditional love. The father, the mother, our true parents, the light, the love, there's no judgment. Doesn't matter what we've done. That's our baggage. And that baggage, why it's bad or wrong, is because it separates us from the light, from the love. It separates us from feeling our true identity as a child of God, as a child of the light. So, Having felt that unconditional love, the resistance evaporated in an instant, and I just wanted to go into the light. So I was streaming down this tunnel. And while I'm going into, this, into the light, the, I remembered this third salient point, the brilliant, bright, beautiful light that Master said is an otherworldly light. It's brighter than a thousand million suns. That's, that's why it's so beautiful. And, um, and the unconditional love. But the third one was, I was um, kind of like in, in today's verbiage, downloaded. I was being downloaded, all the mysteries of the universe. It's like I'm going into, this, into the light and I'm, and I'm thinking, oh yes, yes, of, of course. You know, and it wasn't I was asking what came first, the chicken or the egg. <laughs> I wasn't asking these things. I wasn't asking really anything, but it was this, this direct transmission of information that was just like um, uh, removing all doubt of, of anything. 
it was, it was, uh, it was wonderful. But it wasn't like when I came back, I could, you know, MC equals whatever. You know, <laughs> I, I couldn't like start spouting off all of these, uh, the the, the answers or the or the, the mysteries. Um, I think it was an intuitive, an intuitive connection that what I came away with was the truth of that we are, uh, you know, children of God. And I came out of that so be- with such a beautiful feeling. It wasn't my time to go, obviously. And uh, I didn't sleep for three days. I didn't eat. I was just like, I felt like I was big as this temple. Um, I didn't need any f- sub-material, you know, sustenance. I was just full. And, uh, but that evening I was sitting there, and this was in Ohio, and, and at this ranch I was at, there was a big cornfield. I was just sitting that evening out there in, in this cornfield. And I was just looking up at, at this, this planet, because it was so bright it had to be a planet. And uh, there wasn't a lot of stars shining in, the, in Ohio at that, that time, at that time of year. But I was just looking up at it and thinking how beautiful it was, you know. And everything was beautiful at that time, following that experience. Uh, and this voice came into my head, unmistakably, just as vivid and clear as I'm talking to you now. And it, and it was the Father again. And he said, why do you continue to live the way you do? I've given you yoga. I've given you the key to life. That got my attention. <laughs> Whether you've had one of those or not, it's the, still the same for each and every one of us, isn't it? You know, we're all children of God, children of the light, and we were all called unmistakably, or you wouldn't be sitting here, my master, and, we, and you were ready. And now he's given you the key to life, He's given you yoga, Kriya yoga, uh, and uh, it's just a few more ticks on the clock, and we are free, and we're out of here. We need to live in that consciousness now, don't we? <laughs>